Good morning. Uh, as we gather together this morning, uh, and, and we look at announcements and such, we have uh, Bible study tomorrow night at uh, 7. Uh, newsletter articles are due on Tuesday. We have choir practice at the normal 7.15. Uh, Thursday, uh, for those who are able and interested, starting at 11.30 is Ministerium's National Day of Prayer Observance, which will be held over in Building 2 at Hovis uh, Truck Supply. Um, and then 12.30 is, is PW, uh, circle time. Um, you will see in your bulletin uh, order forms for geraniums. Uh, they will be due on by May 12th. So um, you have that. Uh, the other thing that is in there, uh, and pay attention because this will actually factor in throughout the service, but uh, today is actually the day after the end of U.S. Volunteer Week, but we're just looking at the folks we know of, and we, as I say here at the bottom of the, the sheet, we, I know we have unrecognized dozens of people who really don't like to show off what they're doing, but if you look at this yeah, two-column spread, this is how we reach out in so many ways with the gospel in the community around us is by the things we do, not just here, but out in the community as well, one way and another. And that is just so incredibly important in all that we do. Uh, and wanted to, to call that to your attention and take note. Uh, what other announcements do we have this morning? Okay. Uh, joys and concerns. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, Kristen Cooper is, is now home and back to work. Is that? Back to work. No, not back to work yet, but she is, she is home. Okay, so we continue to keep her in prayer, and we're, we're thankful that, that's, that that is that way. Uh, Tina Hilgert is now home. Um, she's trying to deal with the after effects of wound care uh, for, for what she's dealing with, and she wound up having, she, she is home, but she had to go back over to the emergency room at St. E's to get some, some I guess, patchwork would be the way to put it. To, to get her plugged back together again, but she is continuing to improve and is thankful for all our prayers. Uh, Sherry Pebbles is on our list here, and she wound up successfully having her chemo port. Uh, okay, Sherry? Oh, you're, you're saying that the port's put in. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, they put it in, and she, she is thankful for all the prayers that we've raised, and, and she is thankful that we continue to keep her in prayer. Uh, Jenny, uh, continue to keep her in prayer. Jenny is, is having a real rough go of it at the moment. Um, and it's we're waiting to see how things go. There, there is talk that she will wind up uh, on the, the hospice, in hospice care there at uh, the, 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 yeah. Down by Clearview. Um, she is difficult to rouse at best. She's kind of at the point where where uh, Becky was getting, where she hardly eats anything at all, if anything. Uh, she's still drinking some, but it, it, it's getting narrower and narrower as time goes on. Um, she knows that you all are praying for her. She's thankful for that. Um, continue to keep her in prayer. So that, that's the best I can tell you at this point. Um, uh, we've been keeping Elizabeth Wallace and, and the folks from Wampum in prayer. Elizabeth is doing okay at the moment. She just had her fifth round of chemo this week and, and asked that we continue to keep her in prayer. Uh, Sue was telling us this morning in prayer group that, that in the DR, 
with that project. There's a new uh, sanctuary that has finally been completed in Sabienta. She was showing us pictures this morning on her phone. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful sanctuary and it's filled with people who are thankful that they can be in there. Uh, and that's a great joy. Uh, others we may have this morning. Gary, uh, Josiah is coming around to you. Yeah, well, I know, you, Gary, I know you do, but unfortunately we've got lots of folks with hearing aids and we're trying to make sure everybody gets it. Uh, we have a, a great joy to praise the Lord for this morning. Uh, John's test came back uh, on Friday and he's now three years out cancer free. Oh, praise God. That's excellent. So John Stoops is now three years cancer free. Excellent. We, we praise God with you. Over to Dan. Yeah, I talked to Bruce Martin this morning, and we need to keep him in our prayers. He's got a massive sinus infection, and the doctors can't get to the bottom of it. He's going, he spent two days in the hospital, and he's getting ready to go in tomorrow for CAT scans and try to get to the root problem. Okay. Bruce Martin with massive sinus infection that they're trying to figure out. So we'll keep him in prayer. Uh, over to, to, well, Dave, we'll get to you in a sec, because Tom put his hand up, and we'll hit him, because that's where Josiah is. My niece is over his daughter, he's 13 years old, down in Butler. I was trying to perfect the backflip yesterday on her trampoline, and brought her, brought her knee up, and like, oh, broke her nose. Oh, no. Ah. <laughs> For a 13-year-old girl, that's pretty traumatizing, I'm sure. Okay, and her name, Tom? Avis Timko. Avis Timko, okay. Ava. 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 Okay, okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for the uh, delicious dinner yesterday for the widow and widowers. Thank you, everybody that's involved. We were glad to have that, and we were glad to, to see you there. And you were telling us it was, it's was it been 15 years now. Uh, yeah, my, my daughter went on life support, has access to uh, yesterday, the 27th, it's 15 years. It, his daughter wound up going on to life support 15 years ago, yesterday. Yeah. And so. then the, the ninth I received his heart. So we're coming up on that anniversary as well, 15 years, and we're we're we're, we're blessed and thankful that, that that it took and that you're here and doing well and that that gift of life was able to be given to you. Uh, Nancy and then Brenda. I want to thank everyone for their prayers for my family. Uh, two have cancer, uh, one has lung and heart problems, and we're just waiting for results for everyone. And they asked me to make sure you all knew how thankful everyone was for their prayers. Okay, indeed, thank you, Nancy, and then we'll get the round of there. Uh, speaking of new hearts, Jonah is discharged. Oh, Jonah has been, okay, Jonah uh, up in, in Erie has been discharged. He's the, he's what, seven? seven? I think, yeah. yeah. After so, five months, they Yep. Yeah. Uh, we've been praying for him through that whole struggle, and he's now uh, got the heart and is now out. So, excellent. We need to um, remember the Turner family that was in the bad accident Wednesday evening on the Grove City North Liberty Road um, near the trailer park which they live in. Okay, the Turner family uh, in a, an MBA on North 
Liberty Road. Okay. We will do that. Others? We have a, a visitor and friend who has been here off and on over the years and is back with us, Debbie. Uh, we are glad to have you with us. And if you can just kind of raise your hand and wave to folks, we're, we're <laughs> glad to see you. That's excellent. So, any others this morning? Okay, let us prepare to join together in worship as we listen to our prelude.
As we join together in the spirit of worship, let us come together in our call to worship. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me, rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake, believe me, I die. Please take me out of the net that they have given for me. For you are my refuge, and to your hand I make my spirit, and I will redeem me, O Lord, and for you will die. O Lord of life, King of the universe, we appeal to you as God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you who are Father of glory, that through him you would bestow upon us the Holy Spirit of wisdom and revelation, that we might have true knowledge of him, that having the eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may know that true hope to which he calls us. As we seek you, we beg your presence among us, the immeasurable greatness of your power toward us who believe, according to the working of your great might, that you worked in Christ when you raised him from the dead, seating him at your right hand in the heavenly places, above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is named in this age and in the one to come. As we worship, we seek to know you, who put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all the church, his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Lord, all this we seek by that eternal name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, blessed now and forevermore. Amen. Let us join together in singing, There is a Wideness in God's Mercy.
the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. Yet Christ died for us. He rose for us. He reigns in power for us and he prays for us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that one is a new creation. The old life is past and gone, and the new life has begun. Let us give glory to God for the forgiveness we receive through his Son. in him. 
By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Then our second lesson from John's Gospel from the 15th chapter. As Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I live, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire, and burn. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. It's like a miniature cross country team. They're all or sprinting team. They're all getting up here. <coughs> Hi, Quinn. Big smile. Thank you. <laughs> How are you guys doing this morning? You doing well? Oh. What's wrong, Liz? Oh, you just, okay. I get a big, he gives me a thumbs down and he gives me a big smile, so. Okay. Um, do you guys know what this is? It's a laptop computer. Yes, it is. Um, it's my old laptop computer. What can you tell me about this computer right now? Now. It's, yeah, it, it's dead. That would be true. It looks like it won't work. Well, that's, at the moment, pretty much true. Um, because I have a new computer, I don't use this computer very, very often. Actually, it's probably been four or five months since the last time I used it. Um, so it hasn't even been charged up. If it's not plugged in, what happens? It's dead. It's dead, yeah. There's no power to it. And if there's no power, then and no electricity, and it means that it's not going to run. Um, at that point, it's a really big paperweight. But that's not what it's meant to be, is it? It's supposed to be plugged in so that it can work, right? Well. Jesus is talking about that in, in the lesson we just heard. He says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Have you ever looked at a grapevine? Okay. Yes, I see some heads going, you know, but yes, okay. Um, where do you think grapes come from? No? Vines. Vines, yes. And the, 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 the grapes grow off the ends of the branches. The main, the main vine grows up, and then the branches come off, but if the, if the grapes fall off, um, 
they dry up, and they turn into raisins. Yes, that's absolutely true. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you like grapes? Okay. The, uh, are you a big fan of raisins? Uh, okay, you got a yeah, but we got a no, a couple of no's over here. A lot of people don't like raisins because they're dry and they're hard. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, we, we are, as, as believers in Jesus, we're supposed to be tied into him. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. That means we're supposed to actually give good grapes, good fruit. Yep. The same way that my computer can't work if it's not plugged in, we don't work if we're not plugged in. But the cord that keeps us going is the Bible. That is our constant cord. It gives us the power because it tells us about what we need to know about God. It tells us what we need to know about God's Son, Jesus, and what He's done for us. And we don't always do that quite right. And sometimes we kind of fall away. And we're kind of like those nasty raisins instead of the grape. But Jesus is also a shepherd. And his word also functions like a staff. Kind of kicks us back into play when we get off the path. When we're not on the vine, he makes sure that we can be connected to the vine. And the things that we do that we shouldn't, he cuts back. So it kind of falls away. And the good stuff, he, he fertilizes and takes care of so that it will grow. And we got a whole, if you look around for a minute. What do you see in this building right now? A lot of people. Yep. We got 50 plus people right here in the sanctuary this morning. And we got flowers too. Yep. Um, but like flowers, we're supposed to bloom. We're supposed to produce something. We're supposed to be able to do something. And all of us in this room wind up going out one way or another and we tell people about Jesus, about his love, and how important he is. Okay, candy. Well, sometimes it can be giving candy, yes. Um, but those things, those things, yes. No. Sometimes it's giving money. Sometimes it's telling somebody you care about them when they're feeling hurt and icky, when they feel down. Think about the times when you feel down and you feel icky. How much better can it make you feel when somebody gives you a hug or tells you that you're special or that you're important? So those are the things that we look for. And you guys are going to wind up talking this morning about that. And so I'm going to, I'm going to pray and you guys can go on down to Children's Church, okay? Wait, we're going to pray first, okay? Lord, we ask your blessing on us. Show us the ways that we are special to you, that we are good branches and good, that produce good fruit. Show us how to do that. Keep us attached to you. Keep us healthy and make us full. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen.
Redeemer, be glorified. 
these two lessons back to back. The one directly from John's pen as a letter. The other, Jesus' own words that John records. But they point us back as Jesus' commentary from the, the passage here in uh, John 15 to a short passage from Isaiah chapter 5 when Isaiah says, Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, the men of Judea, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? Now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste, it shall not be pruned or hoed, and briars and thorns shall grow up. I will command the clouds that no rain may rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. He looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed. For righteousness, but behold, an outcry. Jesus looks at that <coughs> passage, that prophecy, and he's saying, look, I'm fulfilling that prophecy. I am the vine. I am the, the, the one who is here, and you are the branches. As we hear in the communion liturgy, every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper together, we hear those words of Jesus, I am the vine, you are, are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Yet abide in me, and you will bear much fruit. And those words come directly from this passage in John 15. And Jesus is saying, the problem is that the wild grapes got mixed in with the, the good wine grapes. That's why the pruning continues to go on. That even though branches may be cut off in the name of the health of the entire vineyard, he is the vine and we are connected to him and so long we, as we remain connected, we will produce fruit. Now the wild grapes, they are probably going to be either overly sweet or they're going to be completely sour. And they're nasty. And they're useless. And they will not produce the grapes that you need to produce the wine that Isaiah is talking about in chapter 5. In the words that God has given him to speak and to pen. As we look at that, I'm, I'm forced to recollect being up in New York State. And in, in the Finger Lakes, how many of you are familiar with Taylor Wines? You see them at the, at, at the state store. Particularly if you're looking for uh, sherry or port or any of the, the heavier wines, those Taylor is, is a great place that's up on Cannon Begwa Lake, which was about 50 miles from us on a different lake. Uh, but we had, on Seneca Lake, we had over 200 miles of shoreline on that lake. And on virtually every hillside, there were vineyards. That whole area, all the Finger Lakes, are one of the biggest wine-producing regions in the world. Because it's, it's fertile ground, it's just rocky enough that it, it's good soil, but, but not too rocky, it's good soil for the, for the vine, for the grapes. And the climate conditions are just about right, almost perfect for producing wine grapes. 
You don't want table grapes up there because those tend to be nasty and the only thing they're really good for is if you use a lot of sugar and you make grape pies. But the wine grapes are some of the best in the world. And they get cultivated and they get pruned. And what in, in the end of the summer into the fall when they go to picking season, those vines are huge. One line of vines may be almost, well, they're probably about as wide as this side of the, the chancel. And they extend for acres. And they're full. And they produce huge quantities of grapes that, be, that get processed into wine. And then, after they're picked, and the leaves fall off, between November and February or early March, battalions of people, usually, believe it or not, usually older ladies in the community, farmers' wives, go out with their shears. And they go out every day, and within a three-week period, you have these full sets of vines the branches everywhere spreading out, and they get almost, it seems, mercilessly pruned until there's just enough on the vine to hold the vine to the wire on the trellis holding it. And all those branches that are no longer producing fruit or were producing nasty fruit wind up getting put in huge fallow piles where they will be disposed of by being burned. And this is the illustration that Jesus is using. And he says, no, but if you abide in me, if you're plugged into me, you will bear that good fruit. That fruit will be useful. It will not be sour to the tongue. It will not be disgustingly sweet. You will not be a raisin. You will be the good fruit that produces that good wine. How do we do that? Well, that's where we look to John's words from the letter. That we are called to abide one with another, to love one another. For God is love. Notice that John is very, very tight in how he phrases that. He says, God is love. He does not say love is God. Love comes from God. God is love because he inhabits the love that he himself exhibits and has created. That's one of his characteristics. Without him, we would not have love. When we look at many things in the world around us that claim to be love, they are not. They tend toward lust, not just of the, the sexual variety, but lust for all sorts of things, which become greed, which become avarice, which become all kinds of trends that we are best to avoid. Those become the sour grape, the things that we are not called to be and become. But we are called to produce good fruit. And I, 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 I was noting this morning, talking in Sunday school, that it is providential, I'm convinced that it is utterly providential, that these lessons fall this Sunday in the season of Easter, right as we finish out Volunteer Week here in the U.S., and as we look at this list of the things that we do, look at how many different groupings are represented. Not just in this congregation, but in the community all around us. How is it that we touch hearts, minds, and lives in the world around us? To whom do we speak? How many of you go grocery shopping? How many of you like to eat? <laughs> okay. What 
is one experience that almost all of us have unless we use the self-serve lines at the grocery store. We talk to cashiers. How often when you are in line talking to, getting ready to go to the cashier, you're behind someone or just in front of someone who is one walking, talking catalog of complaint. Whatever the cashier did was wrong. They're perfectly happy to let the cashier know that they're incompetent, that they're stupid, they're ugly, they're slow, and whatever else. How effective is that going to make that cashier with the next customer in line, and the one after that, and the one after that? Because the effect produced is cumulative. And it can be soul crushing. But instead, if we come through the line and we present the fruit in our <coughs> words and in our behavior, we can literally change a day for that individual. And it's not just at the grocery store, but that's a great example. How many of us meet people in distress every day? What words and actions do we have for them? Well, we have a lot. Take a look at this list. We live in an age where volunteerism and voluntary organizations are in free fall. If you look at the statistics for people's level of engagement, it is going through the floor. It becomes more and more difficult to get people to volunteer to run for office, to take part in civic and community organizations. Look at any fire, volunteer fire department in our area, in our state, across the nation, that is not desperate to gain new volunteers. How many folks have had associations with fraternal organizations that are now suffering as much as we in the church are from a dearth of people? Why? Because there are many in the wider church, in the wider community, who have produced sour fruit. And people beg off and turn away. But instead, we are to abide in him, to abide in love, to present that love to the world around us. And it's not just willy-nilly love that feels good and gives us goosebumps and liver shivers. It is to be tangible. It is to be real. It is to produce that good fruit in the actions that are derived from our faith in him, from his work in us from his having taken away from us the guilt that we had because of his death and propitiation for our sins. Even as a, the kids identified readily enough that this is indeed, functionally at the moment, a dead computer. Computers contain what we record and put in them. How many of you have ever thought of yourselves as computers? We record and contain that which has been programmed into us. Where do we get that programming? We get it from here. And we implement it and, and teach it and inculcate it amongst ourselves. Think about the change that we see and that we can present to the world by something as simple as passing the peace. Now that's it, it, it comes to me powerfully because I've looked at, I can't tell you how many congregations where in the passing of the peace, people walk up and it's, yeah, peace of Christ be with you. And they put their hands down and they turn around and they walk away. And within a minute and a half, everybody's sitting back down in the pew and they look as functionally grim sitting down as they did when they were standing up. And if you watch enough videotaped services on the internet or on TV, 
you will see that look on many, many faces. Consider that it took us almost three minutes this morning to pass the peace. And you know what I saw? I saw joyful people, glad to see each other, loving each other. I didn't just see weak, limp handshakes. I actively heard people share the peace of Christ with their neighbors. I saw people smile. I saw hugs being given. If we can do that amongst ourselves, and we must do that amongst ourselves, think about the impact that that has in the wider community around us. Think about all the, the things that we have represented here and the ways and, and connections we have to touch the world around us. And remember continually that unless we are plugged into him, unless we are connected to that vine, we produce either bad fruit or no fruit. We can be pruned. But to abide in him, to abide in love for the body, to be connected to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, means that we will produce good and lasting fruit. Indeed, let us abide in him, that he abides in us, that we will produce good fruit. Amen. Let us stand and affirm what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we abide in Him and abide one in another, by his love and transformation, let us be assured that our prayers of faith are heard and will receive an answer. Almighty God and Father, you who are the vine dresser, you who have planted us, who have created us to produce good crop, good fruit, wholesome wine. We come before you and as difficult as it can be to ask, we ask that you would continue to prune us individually and together that indeed in your righteousness we might bear that good fruit. Lord, place us where we need to be in each given moment. Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to those situations around us, those people in need who must hear that gospel message, who must see it enacted in their lives, who will be touched and refreshed and blessed by that fruit of the vine that you make us to produce. Lord, in a world that is off kilter and broken, that frequently exhibits raisins or nothing at all, we ask that our presence might touch, might bless, 
might strengthen and might call people back to you. We continue to pray and act as the priesthood of believers, interceding for the world around us, upholding in prayer those who lead us, that they might be continually called back to your path, warm, discipled, and disciplined. Lord, touch those leaders in heart and in mind and in spirit. Lord, we ask, as that body of believers, in a particular way, that you would continue to abide with Jonah as we pray, that you might add many years to his seventh by the life-saving gift of a new heart, even as we pray for the family of the donor, so too we are thankful for that gift for Dave and for the family, again, of that donor. Those 15 years that you have given to him, that you have given to us by his presence, his life, and his continued ministry in our body and in our community. Lord, we ask that you would continue to abide with Tina Hilger, asking that she would heal swiftly and well that you would be with those who seek to treat her and help her, that they might be effective, that they might be listening and useful. Lord, we ask that you would abide with J.R. Freed as he is now home and is seeking to work part-time, that you would be with him, that you would touch and lift and strengthen him. <coughs> Lord, we ask that you would be with, with Nancy's family, particularly with her brother, as he has been re-hospitalized now and is suffering from an infection that they seek to treat. We ask that you would be with Elizabeth Wallace and with the, our brothers and sisters at Wampum Church as Elizabeth has gone through her fifth round of chemotherapy, that you would be with Sherry Pebbles as she has had her port in place, that you would grant peace and comfort to Jenny McClymans, touching her, reminding her that she is loved and valued, that you hold her in the palm of your hand, Lord, we rejoice with the Stoops family, with John in particular, at news of three cancer-free years. And we are thankful beyond our ability to express. We rejoice with our brothers and sisters elsewhere, in Savienta, as they worship this morning in that new sanctuary, we rejoice for them. We ask that their light might shine from that building. Lord, be with Bruce, with those who seek to treat him, that they might find an answer to this infection of the sinus that he has. That you would be with Ava as she recovers from her broken nose that you would be with the Turner family who suffered in this, in this auto accident here in our community. Lord, we ask that you would be with those in Oklahoma and Nebraska and elsewhere who have suffered last night through the, the disaster given to them by the tornadoes that have afflicted them. In all these things, Lord, known to us and unknown, 
we come before you asking that you would hear our prayer trusting that your spirit intercedes with groans too deep for words when we don't know what to pray for as we ought in the the solidity of that promise of your character of your perfection we come before you making bold to pray as your son has taught us saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever. Amen. Let us come before the Lord bringing our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings in joyful thanks for what he has freely given to us by his love and his grace.
Your eyes and see. 